G'day guys, Ian here, and today we're talking about respiratory infections in carpet pythons. Now guys, this one will be about administering antibiotics, and if you are new to this channel and you haven't already done so, please do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, turn on those post notifications, and welcome to Cookies Critters. Okay guys, so about two weeks ago, we did upload a video on this boy here. He is a two-year-old carpet python, and he did have very early stages of, uh, of respiratory infection. Now guys, we did seek medical uh, advice for our reptile veterinarian, and she agreed that we could continue doing the home remedy here at Cookies Critters with simple things like tweaking the husbandry, so isolating him, putting him in a nice warm tub, so increasing his temperature, removing humidity, doing bacterial mouthwashing, and even doing some nebulizing at home with a saline and F10 solution. Now guys, uh, obviously two weeks has passed. We have gone back for our follow-up uh, appointment with the vet, and especially with the winter cooling coming upon us and preparations for this coming breeding season, the decision was made that uh, we administer a course of antibiotics, so that way he is 100% fit and healthy before we cool him. So guys, uh, stick around. We are going to talk about the, uh, the benefits, the pros and cons to uh, antibiotics and, uh, and I suppose the most important procedures for that. So guys, let's get started. So guys, we are going to talk about the use of antibiotics in reptiles and specifically today in snakes. Now, if you make the decision that you are going to administer antibiotics to your reptiles, you need to commit to it 100%. If the vet gives you 10 doses of antibiotics, you need to give the snake 10 doses. And before the 10th dose, I always recommend that you book a follow-up with your veterinarian to have them do a health check and an assessment to make sure that the animal does not need any more antibiotics. Now guys, if you stop your antibiotic regime earlier than the veterinarian has prescribed, you have just made a critical mistake, and I'm gonna tell you why. So guys, reptiles have evolved to, uh, to not show any signs of illness, sickness, and weakness. And it's a form of anti-predation. So obviously, uh, you know, the, the, the weaker animals always get preyed upon first. Now, if you pick up your snake and you think, okay, well, he's breathing fine, uh, he looks healthy to me, I'm just gonna stop the antibiotics. Now, what's happened is there is still possibly a, uh, a small population of the, uh, the, the virus, the bacteria, the infection inside your snake. Now it's this small population of bacteria inside the snake, which is potentially gonna become antibiotic resistant if you do not continue the treatment to kill it all off. If you let it regrow and repopulate and reinfect the snake back to the point where it is ill again, then that snake is now gonna become antibiotic resistant, which means in the future, no matter what you throw at your snake, it's not going to clear it up and they're going to need stronger and nastier antibiotics to clear that infection, which is only reducing the, uh, the capability of your snake's natural immune to, uh, to fight these viruses and these infections. So guys, stick with the plan that your veterinarian has given you, follow through with all the treatments and make sure you do have a follow-up before your treatment expires. So guys, stick around because we are gonna roll into giving this snake a antibiotic injection and we're gonna show you how it's done. Hey right, guys, so here we have a preloaded syringe. The, uh, the veterinarian has calculated the amount of antibiotics required based on the weight of this boy. Now, obviously it is important that you do listen to your reptile veterinarian is because they are gonna advise you of how they want the injection administered. Now, there's going to be two words they're going to say to you. They're either going to say subcut, which is subcutaneous, underneath the skin, under the scales, or IM, intramuscular, and that is deep into the tissue of the snake. Now, obviously, both techniques are completely different, and you need to uh, follow their instructions, so that way you administer the injection the right way. And so, a while ago, we did do a, uh, a video on giving a blue tongue a injection, and that video was subcutaneous. So that was just sliding the, uh, the syringe underneath the scales of the blue tongue. For this little boy, the, uh, the injection is going to be intramuscular. And so the, uh, the length of the needle is actually a little bit longer to get into the muscles without actually penetrating any organs. 
and uh, we'll show you how it's done. Hey okay, guys, so uh, for this procedure, it's always recommended that you do have two people involved. You have one person holding the snake and holding the head, and the second person is the one that's administering the antibiotic injection. Now, obviously my partner would freak out if I asked her to, uh, to hold the head of the snake, and there's no way she's going to give the snake an injection because she hates needles. Now, uh, guys, so we are gonna do this by ourselves. Uh, I, I am quite capable of doing this by myself, but it is just a lot easier with a second set of hands. Now, the most important thing that you wanna do for, a, uh, for an intramuscular injection is you wanna locate the spine. Now, on this boy here, uh, obviously when you palpate the spine, you can feel uh, the, the vertebrae in the spine, right? The vertebrae right there. Now, he does have these nice clean lines running down left and right of the, uh, of the body, and they are the perfect distance because we want to be about a centimeter either side of the spine uh, for our injection. So, guys, uh, if, uh, if you're running Imperial or whether you're running Metric, uh, just go a thumb distance apart and you won't be wrong. Okay guys, so obviously the, uh, the idea of this intramuscular injection is for the needle to go into the muscle. And when we do that, we do want to draw the syringe back just to confirm that we have no blood coming through, that the, uh, the needle isn't in a vein. Now, with all that covered off, we are going to give the snake the injection. Now, the most important thing that I forgot to cover off on before is that these preloaded syringes are typically kept frozen. So you do need to defrost the, uh, the antibiotic before administering it to the snake. Obviously, you can't pass a, uh, a block of ice through a needle. So simple way is you can hold it in your hand, give it a nice squeeze, and your body temperature will quickly defrost the antibiotic. Otherwise, you can leave it out for 10 to 15 minutes and this will defrost the needle nice and quickly. Now, safety points with uh, giving a needle. Obviously, it is a sharp. Uh, you don't want to have a needle stick injury. Um, and after we finish with the injection, we want to make sure that we do uh, reinsert the cap and that we dispose of the syringes in a safe and hygienic way. If you've got a sharp spin, great, put it in a sharps bin. Otherwise, put it in a plastic container and, uh, and take it to a sharps disposal uh, as soon as you can. Don't just put this into general waste. Okay, so we have our snake. We know where we want to administer the injection and that is around this sort of white dorsal stripe. Okay, so what we wanna do is we wanna, once again, just quickly palpate that spine. This is the spot that we are going to do the injection and we are going to slide it in under the scale, increase the angle a little bit further down and this is where we want to draw it back. Draw it back, there's no blood. Slide the needle out. And just remember, we do want to cap this as soon as possible. Hey okay, guys, so like I mentioned earlier on, we do want to dispose of our syringes and our sharps in a uh, considerate manner. Uh, make sure you do put them into a appropriate sharps disposal bin. Uh, the boy is going to be put back into his little uh, rehab tub and uh, he will have his uh, mouth bacterial wash and his nebulizing done this evening. Hey guys, so it's now been 30 days since we started filming this video and the snake has had all of his injections. He's had twice daily antibacterial mouth swabs and he's had his nebulizing done as well. Now in this time, he has made a full recovery and he has been returned back to his original enclosure. Now guys, if this video did help, if you found it informative, please do us a favor, hit that like button if you haven't already done so. Please subscribe to the channel, turn on those post notifications. And as always guys, if you've got them, keep your beard treated and your snakes heated.